Good morning, everyone. Good morning, and welcome to Prince of Peace Church. There is a song that I uh, chose for the theme of this Lent of coming back to God, of returning back to God. And so I will be playing it this morning. It was written by a Benedictine monk, and it'll be about, it's all about coming back to God, returning to God in the season of Lent, okay? So I would like you to listen to it this morning, and then next Sunday we'll be singing it in place of the prayer of St. Francis, okay? It's the theme of this, uh, of our, of this Lenten season for us. Coming back to God, returning back to God. Okay? Thank you. Oh. <laughs> you better do that, Mark. <laughs> okay. It's the seven quarters.
please stand? Bless the Lord who forgives all our sins. Please kneel, kneel if you are able. Hear the commandments of God to his people. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of bondage. You shall have no other gods but me. You shall not make for yourself any idol. You shall not invoke with malice the name of the Lord your God. Amen. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Amen. Honor your father and your mother. Amen. You shall not commit murder. Amen. You shall not commit adultery. Amen. You shall not steal. You shall not be a false witness. Amen. You shall not covet anything that belongs to your neighbor. Amen. Jesus said, the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Let us now confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. Loved you with our whole heart. And we humbly repent of your Son, Jesus Christ. Mercy on us and forgive us. <coughs> In the glory of your name, amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Almighty God, whose blessed Son was led by the Spirit to be tempted by Satan, come quickly to help us who are assaulted by many temptations. And as you know the weaknesses of each of us, let each one find you mighty to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A show of gratitude and trust we offer to God the beginning of our harvest, our first fruits, knowing that we would have nothing without God's gracious love and that he will provide sufficiently for us. The first reading this morning is from Deuteronomy. 
When you have come into the land that the Lord your God is giving you, as you inheritance to possess, and you possess it, and settle in it, you shall take some of the first of all the fruit of the ground, which you harvest from the land that the Lord the God is giving you, and you shall put it in a basket, and go to the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. You shall go to the priest, who is in office at the time, and say to him, Today I declare to the Lord your God that I have come into the land that the Lord swore to our ancestors to give us. When the priest takes the basket from your hand and sets it down before the altar of the Lord your God, you shall make this response before the Lord your God. A wandering Aramean was my ancestor. He went down into Egypt and lived there as an alien, few in number, and there he became a great nation, mighty and populous. When the Egyptians treated us harshly and afflicted us by imposing hard labor on us, we cried to the Lord, the God of our ancestors. The Lord heard our voice and saw our affliction, our toil, and our oppression. The Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand and an outstretched arm, with a terrifying display of power, and with signs and wonders. And he brought us into this place and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. So now I bring the first of the fruit of the ground that you, O Lord, have given me. You shall set it down before the Lord your God and bow down before the Lord your God. Then you, together with the Levites and the aliens who reside among you, shall celebrate with all the bounty that the Lord your God has given you and to your house. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us now read the psalm responsively. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the might and mighty. He shall say to the Lord, you are my refuge and my stronghold. First. Because you have made the Lord your refuge, and the Lord your refuge, there shall no evil happen to you. Neither shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you. You in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands. Lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and adder. Trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. In trouble. And bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him. My salvation. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, Son and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was in the, the beginning, beginning, is now, now and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. God draws all sorts of people in all sorts of ways to the foot of the cross and to salvation through his Son, Jesus Christ. Whether by word or by deed, all glory is to God. The second reading this morning is from Romans. The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is, the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says no one who believes in him will be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls to the name of the Lord shall be saved. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. After his baptism, Jesus, full of the Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the wilderness, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing at all during those days, and when they were over, he was famished. The devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become a loaf of bread. Jesus answered him, It is written, One does not live by bread alone. Then the devil led him up and showed him in an instant all the kingdoms of the world. And the devil said to him, To you I will give their glory and all this authority. For it has been given over to me, and I will give it to anyone I please. If you then will worship me, it will be all yours. Jesus answered him, It is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil took him to Jerusalem and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He will command his angels concerning you to protect you. And on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, It is said, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. When the devil had finished every test, he departed from him until an opportune time. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Jessica, I think you have my sermon this morning. <laughs> Do you have my sermon? Okay. <laughs> she could preach if you want her to preach this morning. <laughs> thank you, dear. Thank you, dear. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> By accident. Thank you, dear. <laughs> the word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. Amen. Well, that was a good start, right? <laughs> That's a good thing. My friends, welcome to Prince of Peace Church this morning, the first Sunday of Lent. And we have just observed Ash Wednesday this past week, and we were signed with ashes in the form, in the form of a cross to begin the season of Lent. Ash Wednesday reminds us again that we are dust, and unto dust we shall return. And those ashes remind us of our mortality, that we will not be here forever, that life is fragile and finite. As we begin this first Sunday of Lent, I ask you to reflect upon three themes the first is finding your home in the Episcopal Church. The second theme is returning home, coming back to God. And the third theme is being rooted in the Word of God. First, in the first reading from Deuteronomy, we have heard that we are called to thankfulness that though our hands have toiled the earth, that we, we will know the fruits of our faith. And it is the Lord who owns the land and has blessed us. And we are called to be good stewards of all that he has given us and to give back out of what we have been given. And in the psalm today read that we read together, we are called to trust in God's mercy, to take refuge in the Lord, 
and that we are free to, re- to be, take refuge, to trust, and to be held safe in the arms of grace. And Paul, in the second reading, calls us to a radical humility. He says, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. All who confess faith in Jesus Christ are the same. And in the gospel proclaimed by Deacon Chris, we hear in the gospel of Luke today about Jesus going into the desert, the wilderness, to pray, to be alone with God. And there he is tempted by the devil. So my friends, on this, as we begin Lent today, on this Sunday, we too are called to go into the wilderness with Jesus, to pray, to reflect, to examine our lives, to reflect upon our need to be redeemed and restored. And on this past Ash Wednesday, we heard the prophet proclaim to us, blow the trumpet and sound the horn in Zion. Return to the Lord with all your heart. So what does returning home mean to us? I could, there's a story I remember when I was in the seminary. I studied up in Boston and taking that long five and a half hour trip back from Boston to, well, I live in Lackawanna County, old, a little town called Old Forge. And five and a half hours, we traveled in a little Chevette. A little Chevette, a friend, uh, Mark, he was one of my classmates, and he drove, he was driving, we packed our cars. We only had a few free weekends. You know, we were studying in the seminary. We only had a certain amount of free weekends we could go home. The rest of the, of the, the seminarians, they were, uh, you know, they, they lived close, most of them, in New England. So they went home. They got to go home on the weekends, uh, you know, pretty much more than we did. But we packed up this little Chevette, and we traveled down Route 84, I remember, going down the, from Boston, uh, Route 84. And whenever I saw the sign, Welcome to Pennsylvania, it was like you took a deep breath of fresh air. It was like, oh, I'm finally home. I'm finally home. And in the seminary, which was kind of, it was very strict, the faculty voted on us every spring whether we could come back next year to study. And the seminary looked like a castle. It was a very dark brick castle. It looked like a big castle on a hill up in Brighton, Massachusetts. But coming home, you know, uh, you know, on a Sunday afternoon after we had church in the morning, then we could eat our breakfast. Then um, every Sunday around 1 o'clock, and we didn't have cell phones back then, no cell phones, there was a little, it was like a, a telephone booth in the seminary. It was a tel- a, like a telephone booth. We had to go into the telephone booth and I could call home. I called home every Sunday. That was like, it was like coming home again. It was like I could talk to my mother and my father and my, my brothers and sisters, whoever was home, but it was, you know, uh, it was about coming home. It was like a relief. I got to speak to my mother and father on a Sunday around one o'clock after, after well, at, that would be after lunch, around one o'clock. And you didn't know how much I valued that telephone call. You know, uh, you don't know how much I valued it. You don't know how much I valued coming home on the Route 84, coming into 81 North, and seeing the sign, Welcome to Pennsylvania, you were home. And I reflect upon being, what does being home mean? 
you know, having a spiritual home, a prince of peace. When I was transitioning from another church, for a few months, I didn't really have a home. Then one day I sat uh, in the back of this church, Prince of Peace, where Susan Donnelly is sitting, the third pew from the back. And I sat there and I had the service here. I went worshiping here and I just felt so much at home. I felt like I belonged. And then I went to, to talk with the bishop and he said, Joe, yeah, Joe, yeah, you want to become an Episcopal priest? Just, it's all in your, your favor. All, it's your, it's, the ball is in your court. So I started studying to be an Episcopal priest. And it was just like coming home. So on this Sunday, I'd like you to think about what does coming home mean to you? You know, what does Prince of Peace mean to you? You know, the church means everything to me. It means everything to me. I could live without a lot of things. But if I didn't have the church, if I didn't have my faith, if I could not receive the sacraments, I mean, that means everything to me. So when we think about our faith on this Sunday, coming home, What does that mean? The church is a home for me of comfort and healing, of strength, of positive faith, and of nourishment. I get nourished when I come to church. Not only just from you. I get nourishment from you. I mean, I could preach till the cows come home, but, you know, uh, you are why I'm here. You are why I'm here. I see your faith being lived out every day. Going up to Pyramid yesterday, the men and the women. That's why I'm here. I live and I discover what my faith means to me as well. You know, some people here, uh, Jean Carson, her uncle was an Episcopal priest up at Holy Cross Monastery. That means a heck of a lot to me. You know, that really means a lot. Ingrid Prater, her husband, was the priest here for 30 years. That means a lot. All those years of faith. So today, I want you to think about what this church, what does your faith mean to you? Coming back, returning home. This is what it is all about during Lent. And finally, the third theme is about the Word of God. You know, I ask you, you know, our faith is biblically, it's biblically rooted. God speaks to us in the scriptures. And the scriptures are the daily uh, inspired Word of God. I ask you during the season of Lent, If you have a family Bible, if you have the scriptures, place it in the center of your kitchen table. All during Lent. All during Lent. So you can see it. It is visible. It is accessible. Pick it up in the morning or at night, whatever is good for you. And I want you to open it to the readings of the day. I want you to use it with your booklet. For Lent, use it, the booklet for Lent, open the scriptures, or open a favorite psalm, just open it spontaneously and read one, one passage a day. And the word of God, place it right on your kitchen table, right in front of you. It's, you can't miss it when you walk and you, when you're eating. You can't miss it. And let the word of God nourish you. Let the word of God sink into your heart this Lent. So on this Sunday, what will this Lent mean for you? What will this Lent mean for you? What will Lent be? What needs to be changed in you? 
What means what needs to be transformed? Can we look at life in a more positive way, especially with all that's going on in the world? All that's going on. Can we look at life and be grateful for what we have in a more positive way? And what needs to be forgiven in you? The word forgiveness, that is such a powerful word. Nobody uses that too much today, except then when you go to church, you hear the word forgiveness. What does that mean? What needs to be forgiven in you? How may God forgive you this Lent? What needs to be forgiven? May I, do I need to forgive somebody else in my life? So, this is what means about coming home, returning back to God, letting the word of God change you and transform you, along with the Eucharist, along with the sacraments. May God bless you. Amen. And later on, after communion, Bill is going to present the program. We will have an open house here at Prince of Peace after communion. Amen. In this holy fast of Lent, let us offer prayers to God who leads us through the wilderness and gives us water to drink, saying, Hear our prayer. <coughs> oh, sorry. The Nicene Creed, sorry. Excuse me. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, Eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. He came down from heaven. The Holy Spirit, Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. Third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, seated at the right hand of the Father, who come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified, spoken to the prophets. Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church. One baptism for the forgiveness of sins and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now the prayers of the people. Prayers of the people. In this holy fast of Lent, let us offer prayers to God, who leads us through the wilderness, gives us water to drink, saying, hear our prayer. For the church, remembering especially Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, Joseph, our priest, and for Chris and Barb, your deacons, that as we embrace prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, we may learn anew that we do not live by bread alone. We pray to you, O oh God, hear our prayer for this parish family, that the Spirit of God will lead us on our journey to freedom and wholeness of life, 
as we face the trials and temptations of daily living. We pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. For all who hunger and thirst for righteousness, that we may fast from evil and grow hungry for peace and justice. We pray to you, O God. Amen. For the people of Ukraine, that they may prevail in the protection of their homeland, that war will cease and peace break out everywhere. And for the people of Russia who resist the war and stand for peace, we pray to you, O God. Hear our prayer. For all those who fear death, failure, or an unknown future, we pray for the sick and the suffering, remembering especially Jane, Mark, Judy, Terry, Frank, Charlene, Tom, Nick, Kay, John, Barbara, Joanne, Dave, Tracy, Jim, Donna, Claire, Carol, Dolores, Elgene, Stephen, Harris, Lisa, Michelle, Sandy, Jack, Mike, Sue, and for any that you would like to remember at this time. that all we do may show God's care for them. We pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. For those who have died. That they may find a place in the land flowing with milk and honey. We pray to you, O oh God. Hear our prayer. Lifting our voices with all creation, with Mary, the God-bearer, and all the saints, let us offer ourselves and one another to the living God through Christ. You, O Lord, our God. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, who made us in your image. Hear our prayers for all people, and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may conquer every test and each temptation of the evil one. Glory to you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. God's peace, everyone. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name and come into his courts with thanksgiving.
Lord, wash away my iniquity and cleanse me from any of my sins. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who was tempted in every way as we are, yet did not sin. By his grace we are able to triumph over every evil and to live no longer for ourselves alone, but for him who died for us and rose again. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, who are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, has risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, and the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ. By him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, 
now and forever. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Come, thy will be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses. So we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Give us your peace. The gifts of God for the people of God. Spread of heaven. Amen. Amen. Jeff, body of Christ, bread of heaven. 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 Karen. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Carl. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Debbie. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Spread of heaven, Yvonne. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Fred. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Susan. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. The body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven, Cindy. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Body of Christ, spread of heaven. Lisa. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Betty. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, George. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Diane. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Joan. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Bill. Amen. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Debbie. Amen. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Joe. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Pan. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Ed. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Paul. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Does she receive now? Yeah. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Body of Christ, bread of heaven. Amen. She doesn't receive, right? God bless you, dear. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Jean. Body of Christ, bread of heaven, Ingrid. Amen. Body of Christ, 
body of Christ, bread of heaven, Terry. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay, Chris. Thanks. Our post-communion prayer, let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have gloriously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with your spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ, Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Bill, Bill, and then Chris. Yes. Good morning, everyone. I'm Bill Kingsbury. My wife, Joan, sits in the pews here. I'm here to talk about an open house that we're planning to have uh, this Saturday. Uh, Joan and I were approved by Vestry, Father, and the deacons to host this open house. A little bit about Joan and I first. Four years ago, we decided to give Prince of Peace a try. Joan was going to church, had, was actively involved in her church at that time. I had dropped away. I was not a church uh, attending member for 10 years at that point. I did come with her to her first mass here at Prince of Peace. And I've got to tell you, <laughs> and we both agree to this, Father's theme, I've come home again. Now, those of you who are newer members, I'm sure you probably felt the same way. I'm thinking maybe at that very first service that you attended. So we're going to have an open house and it's not going to be recruiting new members. At least we're not, we don't want it to look like that and we don't want it to sound like that either. Uh, what we're going to do is Invite people to come. This will be next Saturday from 1 until 3. And we're going to do it once a month for the next few months. But we're going to have people come from 1 to 3, if they'll come, to see the inside of our church. How many of you people have heard someone say to you when they find out that you attend Prince of Peace, my, what a beautiful church you have. And if they don't say it out loud, they're thinking it. I wonder what it looks like inside. Well, that's what this is all about. We're giving them the opportunity to see. This will be advertised on Facebook, and I'm hoping it will be advertised through word of mouth for you folks. Now, Joan and I have already reached out to some people, telling them we were having an open house. And we're not telling them it's a recruiting thing because it really isn't, although it is, in a way. <laughs> We want to give people the opportunity to see the inside of our beautiful church. We're going to have displays set up. Uh, we're going to have handouts available. We're going to be here to answer questions. But we are not ever going to say, why don't you give us a try? That has to come from them. Holy Spirit. 
Now, everyone's welcome to come if they desire. There's not going to be a lot to do here because it's going to be quiet and probably hardly anybody will show up. I'm realistic about that. But uh, if you want to come and you know, see what's going on, that's great. Uh, but it's not, a, it's not going to be a big deal. It really isn't. It's just for people to come in and see the church. And it might entice people to give us a try without us pushing for it at all. Please don't give people the impression that that's what this is all about, because it's not. It's about giving people the opportunity to see the inside of our church and an opportunity, if they want it, to give us a try. But that has to be their decision. Any questions? Joan will be available uh, in the back after the Mass if you have any questions. And um, you can talk to her about it a little bit more, too. Thank you very much. Thanks, Bill. Thank you. Okay. I'd like to go over a few announcements this morning. Um, let me start out by just saying you may have noticed, and you will continue to notice, some changes or some things that are different during the season of Lent. There's more silence, there's more simplicity. We want Lent to stand out apart from the ordinary times or even the feast days. Um, we were called to worship by a bell, and we were called to, be, to dismissal with a bell. The altar started out bare and empty. The table was set for the Eucharist, and then the table is cleared. Um, service contents, you'll notice some changes in the liturgy of the word, the liturgy of service today. And I ask you just to think about these things and take notice as we move our way through a holy season of Lent. Um, a few things I'd like to talk about, oh, Stations of the Cross every Friday evening here at 7 p.m. If you've never done it, come and try it. Also at this time, so I don't forget, if we have Sunday worshipers in their cars that would like to have communion at the back door, please toot your horns. Not yet. Weather's going to have to get better, perhaps. Or they'll, everyone's coming inside. Great. Uh, also, to let you know that you have been invited as a member of this congregation into a Zoom meeting tomorrow evening at 7 with Convocation 2, the diocesan setup of convocations throughout the diocese. We are Convocation 2, or as we like to say, the Episcopal Churches of Luzerne County. We'll be joined by Convocation 1, which goes way up to the north, and the bishop will be there to talk to us talk about some um, different information and upcoming events. So on the newsletter that you get online, there's a link to sign up for the Zoom and you will get an email how to join it. So please do, if you have the time tomorrow evening, I think you'll find it in, um, a really good experience and even getting to meet some of our brothers and sisters <coughs> in these convocations. If you have questions, see me after church. There will be healing immediately after church. I'll be up front here at the end of the service. And there's a parish life commission meeting immediately after church. And all the commission meetings, the vestry meeting, everything's listed in the bulletin. So I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Take your bulletin home. <coughs> Read the readings again. Sometimes it certainly takes more than one reading for all of all of this to become alive in us. And uh, put your, mark your calendars. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. In uh, Lisa, yes? Uh, I'm happy to say that the Christine Green fundraiser raised $509. <coughs> very good. Very good. Very good. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. The average committee is collecting for Pyramid of Care. And they are in need of socks and underwear. New socks and underwear. There is a laundry basket. Let me see. It's almost full. It's overflowing. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we're uh, collecting until March 20th. Thank you. Thank you. 
Does Thank everyone you. know what Pyramid is when we speak of it? If you do not, it is a healthcare facility for uh, rehab for drug and alcohol in Dallas, up near the police station by the Country Club uh, Shopping Center. And we've established and will continue establishing ministries of mutual um, <coughs> contact, uh, visiting, worship, services that we can help them, which in turn helps us to be better Christians. Very good, very good. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.